Welcome to a tutorial on op amp circuits part 3. Okay, so there you go. In this tutorial, uh, what I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you, about, or rather, I'm just going to, you know, take you back to the 1960s to just show you how the op amp was, you know, applied in various sorts of mathematical or computational purposes. Okay. So, in order to bring out this fact, you know, I'm just going to show you, or rather, you know, introduce you to uh, two circuits over here uh, that are, of course, you know, known uh, specifically as, uh, we'll just come down to it shortly after I change the color, yeah. So, one of them is known as the summing amplifier, okay. So, here we have the summing amplifier or it's also you know commonly known as the adder right so what happens in this uh, you know circuit is that okay I'll just change the color for this purpose yeah if I just uh, draw the circuit of uh, this using uh, the op amp of course so we'll have a you know negative uh, I mean here are the negative and the positive input terminals so for this circuit we'll just you know need to ground the non-inverting input of the op amp and so what this circuit basically does over here is that it it just you know um, creates a rather you know uh, outputs a voltage over here that's the output voltage VO that is just equal to the sum of the voltages at its inputs okay so it can just you know sum up the uh, input voltages and produce them as the output so that's pretty amazing so it can an amplifier that can add Wow. So, just uh, for the matter of consideration, just uh, look at this circuit diagram and over here we have the feedback resistance RF. Okay. So, that's the feedback resistance RF. Okay. And here we have several input resistances. Okay. I'll just call them R. And these input voltages, you know, can be called V1, V2, V3 respectively. And now, if we just you know try and understand the working of the circuit, we can see that uh, since uh, we have this uh, non-inverting input grounded, okay. So now this is uh, the actual or the physical ground, as we know. And as we had you know learned in our previous tutorial, that whatever voltage would fall at the input uh, to the non-inverting input of the op amp, okay. So that would be you know, reflected back to the inverting input. Okay, so here we are seeing that we would have another uh, you know voltage. I mean uh, the ground voltage at which the non-inverting input of the op amp is would just be reflected back over here at the node G. Okay, which would be approximately at the ground voltage, and hence G is under the or rather uh, it is you know suffering from the virtual ground condition okay so there we go that's the virtual ground condition okay so uh, under this uh, scenario what we would have over here is that if we just you know um, so look at this uh, circuit diagram carefully then we'll see that due to each of these voltage sources I mean the input voltages applied at these terminals okay we'd have different currents okay flowing through the resistances all right and they would come and flow through towards this uh, you know virtual ground node and then through the feedback resistance and then finally out through into the uh, output terminal of the op amp so basically if we just you know try and uh, write down the uh, mathematical you know expressions for the currents okay so let me just call them as i one i two and i three in this case so we just have uh, that um, let's say uh, we are having i one as you know uh, let's see what we have here okay fine so we'll have v one minus uh, g by r and we'd have i two as v two minus g by r okay and we'd have i three as v3 minus g by r so uh, if we just take a look at this uh, circuit again then we'll see that 
all of these currents I1, I2 and I3 come up and meet at this common node. So we know by KCL that the currents meeting at a common node have, I mean they just have the property of adding up. So therefore by KCL we would have uh, the net current flowing through the feedback path if we just call it I, sorry, not I1, yeah. So the net current flowing through the feedback path, that is I, should be equal to I1 plus I2, okay, plus I3. That's good. Okay, now if we just, you know, put the values over here, where, you know, I would be actually equal to, uh, that is G minus VO by RF. So if we just, you know, use these values and put it down over here, so we'll get G minus VO by RF equals to, um, we'll get over here uh, V1 minus G by R plus V2 minus G by R plus V3 minus G by R. So if we just, you know, uh, put the value of G over here, we know that G is equals to, or rather approximately equals to zero volts as a ground voltage. Okay, we'll get VO by RF, that's equal to, you know, one by R taken common, we'd have V1 plus V2 plus V3, okay? So from this we'll obtain a relationship where we would just, you know, find that the output voltage is equals to minus RF by R times the sum of the input voltages, okay? So this was particularly the relationship that we were looking for over here so we can see that the sum of, I mean the output voltage is basically a multiple of the sum of the input voltages. So now if by, any, I mean uh, if you just you know construct the circuit such that RF is equals to R, okay, so in that case RF by R would be 1 and we'd have the output voltage equal to the negative of the sum of the input voltages, okay. So now this negative sign over here arises due to the fact that uh, the input assembly right over here is being applied at the inverting input terminal, okay, of the op-amp. But if we would, you know, modify the circuit and uh, arrange for the input to be applied at the, you know, non-inverting terminal of the op-amp in somewhat this way, as I'm going to show you over here. Okay, please be patient with me for some time. Okay, so there we go. So if we would have, you know, uh, grounded the non-inverting input, okay, so there would have been the feedback resistance into the output terminal, so there goes RF. And if we would have, you know, obtained these, uh, you know, um, input voltages and connected them to the uh, non-inverting input in somewhat this manner, okay, then we would have obtained a non-inverting um, Adder, okay, so in this case, the output voltage would have been, you know, VO equals uh, V1 plus V2 plus V3, okay, so that would be uh, RF by R times, yeah, this one. So, and if we would have made RF equal to R, then we would have got, you know, V0 equals to V1 plus V2 plus V3. So, there we have an amplifier which can add the input voltages, okay and uh, produce the output as the direct sum of the input voltages right over here as we can see. So basically keeping this mind we shall quickly move on to the next type of circuit that I'm going to show you over here. Okay so here we have another circuit of the op amp for the computational and uh, mathematical functions which is known as the subtractor. Okay or is also you know known as the differential amplifier okay so in this circuit what happens is that it just produces the difference between the input voltages okay as the output okay so if we just you know try and draw the circuit again okay as you can see here this is basically the circuit of the op amp okay I'm just gonna, uh, you know, apply uh, the voltages over here, okay, or rather I just reverse it so that will be, you know, easier to understand for y'all. So, as you can see here, we'd have a feedback resistance again, and this is, would be our output voltage. So, we just call feedback resistance over here as R2, so this is our feedback resistance. Okay, so there you go. 
and over there we'd have an input resistance as well okay termed as R1 and we'd apply a voltage of let's say uh, V2 to the uh, inverting input terminal okay and here we would have a voltage divider you know formed by another uh, assembly of R1 and R2 as you can see and we'd apply a voltage of V1 and connect this thing to the non-inverting input terminal so as you can see here um, this is basically the circuit for the differential amplifier or the subtractor now if we just you know quickly uh, look at or rather focus in the circuit then we shall uh, basically find out that uh, due to these input voltages you know applied over here uh, I, I mean uh, due to this you know voltage divider constructed over here there would be some current due to V1 flowing through this uh, terminal okay and there would be a voltage right over here let me just call it Vx which would be you know reflected back at the non in I mean at the inverting input right over here since uh, this happens in case of an op amp so it says intrinsic property so over here we'll basically have two equations if we just you know try to find out the value of Vx over here now since uh, R1 and R2 connected at the non inverting input is basically a voltage divider in this case okay so this is basically a voltage you know divider okay so for that reason the value of Vx would be obtained as uh, let's see okay it will be obtained as V1 times R2 by R1 plus R2 so that's basically the voltage across the resistor R2 okay so this is equation number one okay and we'd have another equation for the other current you know uh, let's call it I2 flowing through the R1 and uh, then through the feedback resistance and finally into the output okay so this would happen in case of the input uh, terminal connected with the inverting input terminal of the op amp so we just you know write down this equation as you know V2 minus Vx by R1 plus sorry that's not plus it'll be equal to sorry that's my mistake please don't mind anything okay so there we have it this is Vx minus Vo by R2 so there we go so we'll just call this equation as equation 2 so now if we just you know put the value of Vx from equation 1 into the places where Vx is there in equation 2 okay I'll just let me just write it down over here so um, putting Vx from uh, equation 1 from 1 into equation 2 we'd obtain okay just let me show you what we'd obtain we'd obtain uh, a relationship which would look somewhat like this we'd get the output voltage that's VO equal to R2 by R1 times the difference between the voltage applied at the input terminal so this is basically the relationship which we are looking for just uh, kindly note that uh, V1 is of course the input voltage at the non-inverting input of the uh, op amp okay under this circuit configuration and V2 is the voltage I mean the input voltage to the inverting input of the op amp under uh, this configuration so basically we're searching for this relationship and if we are having you know um, basically if we just get R2 and R1 equal to each other if we just you know, construct the circuit this way so that we put R1 and R2 equal to each other then we'd get or rather uh, yeah get this relationship over here that the output voltage would be equal to the direct difference between the input voltages so this exactly was our aim and we could just design it and obtain it using this circuit as you can see here so basically having said that we just come to the end of our tutorial discussion on the two circuits which are one of the basic ones that uh, you know for which op amps could be used as uh, the uh, I mean in case of mathematical and computational operations so kindly catch our next tutorials on op-amp circuits and uh, till then it's just goodbye for now and uh, thank you